I hope you're having a great day. I want to talk about thyroid today. Every single morning I wake up and my mailbox is filled with queries about thyroid. I want to start off with a little story because a lot of people don't believe that thyroid can be put into remission. As I speak, there are thousands of people around the world who are no longer on thyroid medication. Their doctors have studied their reports, seen that their levels are getting better, and their own doctors have removed them of their medication because they no longer have a thyroid problem. Now, there has been a perception for the longest time that once you're on thyroid medication, you need to live on that medication for a lifetime. I want to start off with two stories before we get into this, because the whole point is most people today, there are millions of people who are plagued with a thyroid pro a problem and they're on medication. The sad part is they don't know what thyroid they have. Do they have an underactive gland because it's not nourished? Or they, do they have a Hashimoto's thyroid, which is an autoimmune condition where that thyroid gland is being attacked? Now, there are two tests that can help you understand this. And a lot of you will wonder, why doesn't the medical world give me this test? Well, they have their reasons and right reasons. Because even if you do this test, the medication is the same, whether you have a Hashimoto's thyroid or whether you have an underactive thyroid. But we're going to understand today why it is so important that you know this. Because if you do these two tests, which I'm gonna talk about right now after my story. So my wife, after she delivered Tiana, she had a thyroid problem. Okay, I was in the city of Pune at that point. So we took her to a doctor and the doctor put her on a dosage of thyroxine. Okay, I spoke to her and I said, listen, there's an easier way to do this. You've just delivered a baby, there's some amount of stress, all of that stuff, which is quite normal. I said, let's take a month off. It was an underactive thyroid gland. Let's take a month off and nourish your thyroid gland. So we use the protocol of food and selenium and MCTs from coconut oil, simple stuff. In a month, her levels were back to normal, completely healed. We waited for another month, rechecked the levels, absolutely fine. On my next trip to New York, I was introduced to a doctor called Dr. Susan, who specializes in thyroid. And she, when she knew the kind of work that I do in integrative and lifestyle medicine, she was kind enough to give me two hours of her time. We sat in Central Park with a coffee under a tree and she explained to me the thyroid gland in totality of how, while the medical world looks at it in one way, symptoms, which is absolutely right. There's nothing wrong with the way that the medical world looks at it. There's a whole nother way that the integrative lifestyle world looks at it. And that is at a root cause level. And that's when I learned of a blood test called the anti-TPO and the anti-ATG. So the anti-TPO is nothing but your thyroid peroxidase test and you have your anti-thyroglobulin test. When you do this test, you get a marker that tells you whether you have a normal hypothyroid, which is undernourished, or you have a gland that is being attacked by your own immune system. If your anti-TPO and your ATG, which is your thyroglobulin antibodies, are on the higher side, right then, you know that you have a Hashimoto's thyroid. Now, most of the doctors don't bother about this because the medication is the same. But I'll tell you why you should worry about it. Because there are many things that you can do if you know what problem you really have. Because lifestyle for a normal thyroid gland can be very different from the lifestyle and food for a Hashimoto's. If you have a Hashimoto's, you have an autoimmune condition. Today, your immune system is attacking your thyroid gland. Tomorrow, it could be attacking your joints like an arthritis, your skin like in psoriasis, a psoriasis, eczema, vitiligo, or something even more deadly like a systemic lupus. So by doing an anti-TPO and an anti-ATG test, you now become aware of possible risk factors that you could have. By knowing these risk factors, you can take corrective action. There's a whole autoimmune protocol. Today we have Hashimoto protocol, Hashimoto patients in remission. You can't cure it, but you can put it in remission. If I remove the triggers that are causing my immune system to attack my thyroid gland, what happens? My immune system relaxes, my thyroid gland doesn't get attacked anymore, and I don't have a problem. Now, let's say, for example, a patient who's celiac, which means this, this patient cannot have gluten or a lactose intolerant patient, okay? The moment they have lactose, the moment they have gluten, their own immune system starts to attack their thyroid gland. 
Now I remove the gluten and I remove the dairy. My immune system relaxes. My thyroid gland doesn't produce that many antibodies because it's not getting attacked. Now, while my anti-TPO may take a lot of time to come down, but my ATG is coming down, my TSH, T3, T4 is in level, I'm healing. I know I'm going in remission. If I go back to a bad lifestyle, like even stress, stress causes your own immune system to attack you. So when you're looking at a protocol for autoimmune, any autoimmune, including a Hashimoto's thyroid, where there are certain minerals, certain foods that we're gonna talk about today, there is also your stress, your sleep deprivation. I have patients that when they're sleep deprived, their immune system attacks them. On the nights that they sleep deeply, their immune system is like a baby, it's relaxed and they don't have flare ups. So you see, if you really wanna get better, that is the reason why we do an anti-TPO and an anti-ATG test. When we work with patients in Australia, the US, London, a lot of the doctors literally fight with us. They tell their patients, who needs this test? Why do we need this test? I wanna to speak to that person. So I get onto a call. And my first question to them is, why do you all even have a test like this? If it was useless, it shouldn't exist. But it's on, a medical, it's, it's on your medical protocol, it's on a panel. So why do you have the test if it's not important? And then when we explain to these doctors what we're trying to achieve, they immediately sign off for that test to be done. And today we have doctors who have thyroid problems and Hashimoto's who are doing those tests because they wanna know what problem they have. I don't just have a thyroid problem, I wanna know if I have a Hashimoto's thyroid problem because let me tell you something more about the anti-TPO test and the anti-ATG. It gives you a lot of clues. You see in integrative and lifestyle medicine, why, how are we different from allopathy? Although we work with allopathy, like I have medical doctors on my team as well, but we work with the root cause. By knowing that your anti-TPO and your anti-ATG is high, it also tells me that we need to put you onto a protocol of prevention. Because if you have an autoimmune Hashimoto's, you are also at a risk factor of diabetes, bad cholesterol problems, and obesity. So a lot of people with thyroid actually develop diabetes, bad cholesterol, and obesity. So you see how everything is linked in this beautiful, intelligent body? So you can't just treat the thyroid gland. You gotta know the marker and what condition you have. So now if you have a Hashimoto's, there's a protocol that you can follow of lifestyle, which includes the way you eat, sleep, think, move. If it's an undernourished gland, then you don't have the problem of your immune system attacking you. So then it's mainly dietary and lifestyle. But unless you know what you have, how can you ever treat it besides medicine alone? So if you're gonna be the patient on medicine for a lifetime, you're only looking at the symptom. If you wanna be the kind of person who puts your thyroid problem in remission or heals it, you're gonna to have to have a broader aspect. And that starts off with you doing the anti-TPO and the anti-ATG test. Now, when you get that test, if your levels are high, you know what you have. By doing that test, sometimes your doctors will prescribe that test based on your symptoms. You're tired all the time. You have pale skin, you're irritable, you have mood swings, you're either losing weight drastically, your hair's falling, you have acne all over your skin. They may make you do this test because guess what? You may have something called Graves. You may have Graves disease, which is again, is a problem with the thyroid gland. Or you may have lupus, which is an autoimmune condition. So don't you wanna know what is going on in your body? And that is the reason why we encourage and educate people that please do the anti-TPO and please do the ATG test. I have so many women who have now developed arthritis. They're being treated for arthritis and they're being treated for thyroid. And now we make them do the anti-TPO and the anti-ATG test. And they will be realized that they had a Hashimoto's uh, thyroid, which was an autoimmune condition. And this happened way before the arthritis. Now, if we knew at the time of diagnosis that they had an autoimmune condition, we could have possibly prevented arthritis, which is another autoimmune condition by putting in preventive measures. And that is why it is important for all of us to know the anti-TPO and the anti-ATG. A lot of medical professionals and doctors will say it's not needed, but please ask for it. Pay for it, get it done. If you really want to recover and heal, and one more caution, when you do this anti-TPO, as you start to get better, sometimes your levels could be 500, 600, 4,000, 5,000. Don't worry about that level. It takes time to come down. You can still be healing, but the anti-TPO can come down. Now, let me tell you another reason why we make you do that test. Because a leaky gut syndrome 
is directly connected with this. When someone has a high anti-TPO, we also work on their gut health because they possibly have a leaky gut syndrome, which again is connected with every autoimmune condition that exists, from a lupus to an arthritis to you name it, a vitiligo and eczema. Because what happens is we have allergies to certain foods or we're food sensitive, we have poor gut health, we have molecules of food that are leaking into our blood because our gut health, that's why it's called leaky gut, it's leaking in the wrong stuff into your gut. Now that stuff's not supposed to be in your blood, it's a foreign invader, your immune system wakes up to attack it. There's a concept called molecular mimicry, where some of these molecules mimic your thyroid gland, their thyroid tissue or your cartilage, or your skin. So now your immune system attacks your thyroid gland, it attacks your joints, it attacks your skin. It's called molecular mimicry. And how do we know this? By doing an anti-TPO and an anti-ATG test. It gives us a clue. Yes, there's no medicine, the doctors are right. There is no medicine to treat anti-TPO and anti-ATG, but there is lifestyle, there is nutrition. So. When we look at going gluten-free or dairy-free, for some patients, we remove them of nightshades. For some patients, the moment we cut them off coffee, they start to get better. For some people, they can have coffee. Everyone is unique and different. Some people will manage the legumes. We may not put them on kidney beans. We may not put them on hummus because their gut's too weak. Every time they eat it, they blow it up. We know they have a problem. That's aggravating leaky gut. For some people, they can have it. Everyone's different. For some people, we remove eggs because the moment they eat eggs, they start to blow it up. So eggs, their system can't break down eggs right now. So we remove that. Then of course, refined oils, certain nuts and seeds, then uh, your food additives, your refined sugars. There's a lot that you can do with diet, mainly dairy, gluten, and then you rebuild the gut. You try to heal the leaky gut so that at a root cause level, you stop permeability of toxins and food particles that are supposed to exit your system and not enter your blood. So you go into a building phase of your microbiome. When it comes to your supplements or your natural extracts from food, what plays a massive role in a Hashimoto's thyroid or if you don't have a Hashimoto's thyroid in a normal underactive thyroid. We look at our omega-3s. We look at our omega-6s, our 7s and our 9s, the ratios of them. Whether you're getting it from a supplement or you're getting it from natural foods, it is important to consider that for the healing of your thyroid gland. We look at iodine. Today, too many people are just eating pink salt and they have problems with their thyroid gland. You have to have a mix of your pink salt and your white salt. We look at cruciferous vegetables in cooked form, steamed form, not in raw form. You never have raw cruciferous vegetables if you have a thyroid problem, whether it's a Hashimoto's or whether it's an underactive, undernourished thyroid gland. We look at selenium that's found in supplements or foods like Brazil nuts. We look at zinc, which is required to heal the thyroid gland. We look at turmeric extracts like curcumin. We look at your vitamin D3 levels. We look at your B complex. We look at your magnesium and we look at your iron levels. So you see, there's a lot that you can do over and above just the medication. And when you fit this in with your exercise, a lot of thyroid patients, they cannot do high interval training. So the more they can do a lot of other exercise. So the moment we move them from high interval training to simple exercise for a while, their thyroid readings start to get better because sometimes extensive, intensive workouts can make your immune system more erratic and that can actually slow down your thyroid gland further. So there's even expertise on exercise, your sleep. If you're sleep deprived, you are gonna have a problem with autoimmune and an underactive thyroid gland. And then there's, of course, there's the impact of stress. The more chronically stressed you are, it affects cortisol, adrenaline, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, insulin, tyroxine. So you see, it sounds like a lot. You may be overwhelmed, but it comes down with two basic things that you need to do if you have a thyroid problem. Number one, no. What thyroid problem do I have? How do I know? I do an anti-TPO, I do an anti-ATG. I don't get worried with the results. I just know what I have so I can protect myself in the future from obesity, diabetes, cholesterol, and another autoimmune uh, issue that may crop up. And that's why when you look at the body holistically, you look at it this way. When you're looking at, looking at it symptomatically, you ignore everything because you're only worried about the symptom. And that's why the world lives in chronic illness today. We're great at looking at symptoms, suppressing symptoms, bombarding symptoms. I don't have a problem with that. Do that. Use medicine. Listen to your doctors. But also address the root cause of the problem if you really want to get better. 
You know the amount of people struggling with weight loss and fat loss who are thyroid patients? They don't understand that if they put their thyroid problem in remission, all their weight problems are going to go. That it's an uphill task for them. Their thyroid controls their metabolism, but they're punishing their body with more exercise, more fat diet, starvation. It's never going to work. Why don't you look at healing your thyroid gland so that your metabolism automatically improves and simple exercise and simple food and deep quality sleep and a happy mind will take care of all of your weight loss problems. So that's what we do. You need to understand anti-TPO, anti-ATG. Do not listen to people saying it's useless. If anyone says it's useless, ask them, why does it exist? Why does it exist? And just because the pharmaceuticals don't have a medicine to treat it, it doesn't mean it's useless because the test still exists. That's the importance of knowledge, education. And now that you have knowledge and education, you have one job, move to action. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.